Hey everyone, it's Jim T. Graham with rcgroups.com and today we're going to talk about the most awesome pets. So you may or may not know that when I was five years old, pretty sure you didn't know this, my grandpa took me to uh, air shows all across Texas and the very first plane I ever fell in love with was the pits, exactly like this pits. And so this is the pits S1S, 850 millimeter, Bind and Fly Basic with AS3X and Safe Select. And what we're going to do is take a look at what's in the box, how it goes together, and then we're going to go fly it. So first, the specs. It's 46 ounces. It's 31 inches in length. It's made out of foam. It requires a full-range 5-plus channel DSMX DSM2. It has a 40-amp speed controller. We'll verify that in the photos because some upgrades have been made to this plane after these specs were released. It says the motor size is a 10BL, but it's not. It's a 15BL, and that will allow you to run a 3S or a 4S. Awesome. Thank you, Horizon. Uh, the wing area is 437 square inches, and the wingspan is 33.5 inches. And I have to say that I've owned 40 inches, 60 inches, 70, actually 72. But um, this is a very interesting range of uh, wingspan because it's not so small that it can't take the wind, and it's not so big that you can't throw it in your back seat. And I'm a huge fan of this, and if they come out with more planes in this uh, wingspan that fly like this, I am ready to go. I'm sold. So first you uh, get the box, and of course it's a biplane. Oh, I'm kind of ahead of myself. Cockpit, awesome. And uh, it's a biplane, so of course it can't ship pre-assembled because it would be gigantic. So this is what you see in there. We'll crack it open. Oh, uh, I want to remind you that your landing gear is on the bottom of the box. So if you wonder, like me, where's the landing gear out? It's on the bottom, so don't forget that. We'll take a look at the fuselage here. It's uh, pre-assembled, it, the stickers are pre-applied, it's very red and awesome. The motor is in there. Everything that you would expect from a Horizon plane, ESC, all that good stuff is in there. There's a look at our handsome uh, pilot. I call him Johnny Pilot. Here is the tail group itself, just waiting for the uh, elevators to be inserted, which we're gonna do in a minute. And then we're gonna talk about this landing gear for a second, aluminum landing gear, which we tested thoroughly on the runway. By that, I mean bouncing up and down the runway. And the spats are solidly applied. Many times spats are not, they just fly off the first time you take off. It's got good looking wheel pants and the wheels make this interesting solid sound as it rolls down the runway, which I think you will appreciate as an RC pilot. So here's the elevators. And what I would say to you is uh, the two pieces at the back there, the red plastic, you want to insert those, make sure that they uh, go in all the way. You want to see what that looks like before you actually insert it for good on your airplane. Elevators are very important in RC flight, as many of us know. So uh, you're going to slide that into, well, before we get there, here's the top of the wings with the graphics and um, everything looking very pitsy. And then here's the bottom wing with the graphics applied. You can also see the servos uh, pre-installed, control arms, and all that good stuff. Going to go very detailed into the wings in just a little bit. Then we're going to go fly. Here are the companions. Uh, the companions look innocent enough laying here on the table. They don't look like they're going to make you uh, say swear words and uh, wonder who was the man torturing you with these. We're going to talk about how to get the companions on successfully and... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to coach you through this. And then the prop, the flying wires are optional. I did not put these on on mine. Um, I have heard, I was talking to my kinds. He said flying wires sometimes uh, help a plane, slow it down. Um, I've had big biplanes where flying wires made them fly like bricks, so I opted out. You don't have to use them. And all our other little pieces, our uh, spinner and all that, we're going to put all that on in just a second. And then your manual, it's important. Jason Cole says, read the manual. Okay, so this comes, or this is recommended to have a 3S 2200. You can also run a 4S in there. I ran a 33 in there. Um, I do have some uh, 4S thousands that I have not run yet, but I've con I'm considering using. So pretty broad range of battery, and that is the most generic battery you can get. Here is your landing gear. It's held together with three, uh, not screws, but bolts, I guess. And I did put a little Loctite on there. For my own good, they don't say to do that, but um, I did it for myself. I didn't put a lot on there. Very easy to put that on. So here I am sliding in my tail group. They do suggest that you use cockpit, this pilot. He can't say out of the dang video. Uh, they do suggest you use CA. 
And so I did use a drop of CA, maybe a couple of medium CA on my uh, elevators there. And then when I slid it in, I was just, I wanted to make very sure that it was in, these pieces were touching, and the little red piece back there was together. So there it is. The only thing left to do is to clip on your clevis. And let me say in the manual, it's going to tell you which hole to put your clevises in, which I started everything and blew everything at the stock recommendation. I personally feel like your rudder needs a little more throw. So just a little input there um, for the future. Fly it the way they recommend. And if you don't like it, you can always change it later. The wing. So the wing is going to be a booger bear. This is something my dad might have said. And so what I'm going to do here is I thought before I get too involved in this wing, why don't I pull these out and then go into the fuse and find the aileron leads coming out of there, drop them into the hole and then connect them to my wing. And then if I'm Johnny cool, I'll bind it, which was a no effort, nothing weird here, just a standard binding to your spectrum transmitter. And then I made sure that left and right were left and right. And uh, then I proceeded on with the wing. I just didn't want to get backwards. Now, uh, after looking at this, I'm sure you could have pulled those into the fuse and switched it later in the fuse life. So the bottom wing goes on with this nubbin. You kind of slide it in forward and there's a nubbin there. You'll have a clip. You will clip it on. And this is the simplest part of putting on the wing. If everything else was like this, it would be a dream world. There it is. It's on. Okay. What next, you ask? Well, I'm about to tell you. The Cabane. Oh, it looks so innocent, doesn't it? So they are marked right and left, and the top wing does go out in front of the bottom wing. So that's how you'll know how the conveyors are going to mount on your wings. And then you're going to have two uh, pieces coming out of the bottom and the top of the wing, and this is going to sit down on them. If you were to let go of that, it would simply fall over. So what you do next is there's these two bobby pins, hair pins. I'm sure that's not what they're called. You're going to slide that through the front. Then the concept is it's going to go into the, this is exactly what it looks like. It's going to go into the hole of the uh, bottom wing protrusion, slide all the way down the conveyor to the next hole, go through that hole, and then go all the way in the back of the conveyor. And that is how you lock this up. It sounds so simple. First of all, I want to say I did have one that was relatively easy. So you want to make sure you actually got it in both holes because this is the only thing that holds your wing on. Let's take a look at another side, and then I'll tell you about the uh, how to handle this. Okay, what's going to happen is, is you're going to slide your pin in, and it's going to hit the top or the side or, or, or somewhere, but it's not going to go, it's not going to go in. So uh, some guys on RC groups uh, got water and soap and, and made it so it went in easier. Some guys drilled the hole out. Don't do that. I'm not saying to do that. Everyone hearing me, don't do that. You want everything in here to be tight because it's the wings, right? So don't alter it in any way. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do, if you don't listen to the video after this point, the one thing I've got to say to you is do not push the wing from the bottom with your finger while you're putting the pin in because all you'll do is dent your wing and you will not affect the two little plastic pieces you're trying to work. I would... Ultimately, after doing this four times, I took my thumb and the plastic piece that the pin goes into, I would apply pressure there. And then really the most success I had was wiggling and jiggling everything until it found its place and slid in. And then the back, there is more plastic to press on. But once again, don't press on the plastic on the back and the bottom of the wing. That's not going to help you at all. So just all I'm here to say you're going to think at some point this is it going to go on? This is not going to work. And I'm here to tell you that you just keep at it. Take a break. Go uh, read RC groups for a minute. Come back. You will get all four on and then you'll never have to do it again. So it is very tricky. Onward with the wing installation. Also, you want to make sure how far all the way in is on those pins so that you're actually getting it all the way in. The top is held on with two more nubbins, and there's two uh, clips that go with that. So you then lay the top on after you get your bottom two conveyors connected. That's how I did it. Then you clip on the top, and then you want to put your pins through your top conveyors. So here's a look down the fuselage, and that's where the battery lives. Uh, yeah, that's a 40 amp right there. 
So what you see there, you may not be knowing what you're looking at yet, but you'll know in a second. Like uh, Bubba Spivey says, you don't know what it is, but when you do, you will. Uh, that is a little groove that your battery tray is going to live in. So here's your battery in your battery tray. Tip, pro tip, put Velcro on that tray and put Velcro on the battery because don't think those straps will hold that battery in because it won't. It's going to sling it right out. I've seen it, not on this particular bird, but in, in general, I've seen straps break before. you got to apply the Velcro, uh, especially with this. So what hap what's going to happen here is this is going to slide down that track, and the click that you hear will not be like this. It will not be like click. It will be more of a dull thud, thunk, and that means it's locked in. We did a lot of maneuvers. We never threw this out of that track, so it, it worked well, and I've read where other guys have said that uh, they have many flights and it's held up. So here we are, the bottom wings on. Um, you're looking at the ailerons on the bottom. They have connectors to the top. You will want to verify that all your surfaces are flat and even. You may have to pop those off the clevises and twist them or loosen them. Um, I did have to do that to get everything lined up and straight. Then um, more close up on that. We're looking at our bottom pin. So now I uh, straightened out my elevator and made sure that was nice and flush. And the tail wheel, some guys said they had to bend theirs to keep them tracking straight down the runway. Mine was great right out of the box. I didn't have to touch it, thank goodness. And here's a shot from the front with the clips and the wing and the pilot and the top and the beautiful. If Okay, let's talk about CG at this point. CG is 70 millimeters back from the leading edge. It says 85 in the manual, and that is not correct. 85, I've... I'm not exactly sure what the deal was with that, but I, I do know the deal is 70, 73, somewhere in there. Um, there you go, from that leading edge right there at the front. So here we are again, nice little shot of your clips on the top of your wing. Here's our beautiful landing gear, never touched the runway yet, ready to go. Uh, more close-ups. This is why we'll, this would not be a great FPV plane from the cockpit, but it would be a great FPV plane with the camera on top of the wing, which I'm probably going to do. Here's another close-up of your cabane and how far the pin is and how it should look. Okay, this is a lesson. Your spinner doesn't go on like this. See how the uh, center is protruding towards you? That's backwards. And I thought, how is this going to work? It's going to rub. It's not going to work. And I'm going to show you the right way to do it. And here's the right way. That uh, protruding part goes towards the motor and it has little teeth there that will uh, lock up and provide gription. And then this is the front part. So you're going to slide that back. Then you're going to slide your prop on. Then there's a prop nut, which somehow I don't have a picture of here, but it's going to go on and you're going to tighten that up. And then your spinner is going to go on top of that with a screw through the middle. And I did put Loctite on that as well. Once again, not suggested, just something I've learned from my uh, days of doing what I do. And that brings us here, the runway. You're ready to fly. It's ready to rock. It's a good looking little plane. I'm going to stop. We've done this enough. You've watched the build. I've given you my tips. Now we're going to fly it. You're going to see what it's made out of. Um, I will say that uh, when I was taking it to the field, I thought this thing feels a little heavy, but I'm happy to say it doesn't fly heavy. Sometimes I'd say a plane flies stiff. It doesn't fly stiff. I'm very happy with the roll rate. That's kind of a big deal for me. Um, you might want a little rudder, but flying stock, I had low rates at 70, high rates at 100, and um, right out of the box at, per horizon, by the way. It's usually how it is. Flew great. So we're going to jump over to that. I've got Jason Cole with me. I've got Mike Hines. Uh, we do it on a 3S and a 4S, and let's get going and rock and roll it. All right, we're at the field. I've changed my hat to my Spectrum hat in here. You hear that, the wheels on takeoff? So there it is. It literally jumped off the ground. This is a 3S pack. I'm having camera difficulty. This is one of the first days that we were able to get out in this December weather and fly this thing. So it was just a touch windy. Um, it got windier as the day progressed, as I recall. But that's what she looks like in the sky. Very beautiful. You definitely want to keep it near you. You don't want to fly, you know, an acre away or anything. And uh, definitely a sport plane, sport aerobatic.
at one point I asked Jason, I said, can it hover? And on a three cell, it would hover at full throttle. And then uh, we tried it on a four cell. And I'm going to show that four cell video coverage in just a second. So now you're getting to see some vertical and some roll rates. And I even believe that I did a uh, elevator test to see if it would drop a wing in the next segment. So then we tried to get some blenders out of it, and it was just lacking enough rudder. When we got the bigger battery, we tried. This is possibly the worst video I've shot in a long time. I apologize for the jerky herky. Did I have gloves on or something? I don't know. But, you know, she tumbles, and then Jason was commenting, Jason's not really a biplane guy. He said he didn't like biplanes, and then we all shunned him, everyone at the field. But uh, it is a short-coupled plane, so it certainly doesn't fly like uh, a standard airplane, and that's something to consider, but I think that's what makes it more fun. Let's jump around a little bit. i, I got to think the video got a little better there at the end. Okay, this is good. So I... Knife edge pass. Yeah, I asked for some knife it's edge. too far away for all that high up stuff. <laughs> ah, I skipped for a good reason. That's right, before it gets on video. So that is Steve Johnson. He is a aerobatic full-scale pilot that uh, goes around the world competing. So there's your knife edge pass, man. We definitely have enough rudder for that. All right, everybody, we have Jason Cole on the sticks. Hey. Jason? <laughs> Howdy. How's it feeling, man? It's pretty good. It takes some getting used to. It's got a good roll rate to it. <laughs> On low rates, it's real nice and docile and easy to fly. I'm still trying to figure out like what it'll do, how to make it do things. There's a nice double snap. That was really cool. How do you feel the throws at the high rate at 100% are? It feels good. I might want a little expo on mine. It's I, a little sensitive on the ailerons. I got 30% on everything. See if it'll hover. I think it'll hover. So on 3S, that's full throttle. It's uh, maxed out. Hey, it's still, it'll go vertical, but I think 4S is going to get you the real power you want for uh, 3D kind of flight. So one thing to note, this had a 10 motor on it originally, and when Horizon took over this project, they put a 15. So that altered the uh, CG from 85 to 70 mm and, and gave it more flight capability, a little more robust flying. It looks good in the air, I gotta say, the really vibrant red paint scheme. I was reading, some guy said it felt heavy, and it does feel a little heavy on the ground, but it does not fly heavy. To me, it flies just right. And I don't say that every time, because some planes to be fly stiff, and this is not a stiff flying airplane. And I really like the size. Jason's been trying to work out some blenders. Woof! Camera. How about an old school Lomshavok? Is that what you were just doing? Oh, we were doing some snaps. There's some good little tumbling, kind of. Yeah. I mean, if you like a pit, this is going to be fun. It's not super uh, hard to fly like some pits can be. Right. So, so if uh, you want to dabble in it, you know, I think it's going to be good and safe and easy for people to try and play with. Let's do an old school test like uh, 15 years ago. Let's, let's uh, test the snapping as far as pulling it nose up and seeing if it mushes down or if it uh, snaps. That's how windy it is. You can hear it right there. So that AS3X is really ironing the wind out. Although it's the AS3X has a very light touch on this airplane. Throttle off. I'm going to pull, pull, pull. Still pulling, still pulling. Almost full elevator. All right. Almost full elevator. Dang, that's nice. And it's just mush. It didn't even snap a wing. That's pretty impressive actually and I will note this is a 3s 2200 that they sent us sitting just about in the middle of the tray more towards the pull ring side of the tray okay, the timer coming down, so we're gonna put it on the ground. okay well, Jason I, I like it this is a J keeper Jason's not gonna like this because he's tends to grease them in when he lands but I'm gonna show you the landing gear here yeah keep a little speed on there will the landing gear take a hit Boing. 
Boing, 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 boing. Well, yeah, uh, the landing gear works, so that's awesome. <laughs> uh, I think I was in low rates, so I think high rate I could have flared and got it to stall and touch down on You want to try it one more time? I have an alarm on it. The alarm is dead. We are out of time. Okay, so what we're going to do now is jump to the 3S pack. So now we're on 3S, and it added a little bit of weight, which I can feel. I'm sorry, 4S, 4S pack. But it definitely added a thor. It looks like it made my camera work better, too. Oh, uh, maybe not. Man, I don't know what's going on. Sorry, sorry. We were so lucky to get this day out of all these days. Wow, of man. Wow. I was looking at that to see if the wings were flexing. Four S, by the way. So if your question is, can it get wild? It can get wild. Obviously. Wadding it up like a ball of gum. I really have to say I'm excited to go back out. Try that hover now, Jason. The wind is your friend. How much more power you got there? It's got a lot more power. I'm down to about half throttle now for a hover. So a full throttle on a 3S and a half throttle on a 4S. Yeah, yeah it's got enough to do it for sure. Pull a punch out. Watch this. A hover. Oh, yeah. And accelerate out of this. I lost it. Steve, that you keep hearing talking, is with the IAC. I'm curious. You can check him out. Well, everyone, this has been the Pitts S1S. And that's from a high rate. I want to thank Horizon for sending this bird to me. Or the blender. Not quite enough control. Maybe it's just because it's so short coupled too. Yeah. I don't know. Be sure and read the full review and the link down below. A quarter throttle. Just cruising. There's your timer. Let's see how you do on the four cell landing. Can we land it? And I'm a big fan of this airplane. I really am. It's just the right size, man, to take anywhere. And it flies so great. You're really not giving anything up at this size. As you can see in the video, it, it, you know, it's not a 3D plane, but it sure is close. And good looking in the pits. It's got it all. And... I see. Probably C minus. All right, everybody, it's Jim T. Graham with RC Groups. Once again, thanks to Horizon, thanks to Jason, and thanks to Mike, who helped me get some photos out there. We all were trading up uh, job responsibilities at the field. And thanks to the weather that allowed us to get out there and fly that thing. Um, I really like it.